Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second session in this fall's library webinar series. Today, we are looking at search preparedness and resiliency. Next slide, please. I want to welcome you today. Um, our presenters are Kathy Meals and Trisha Mark, who are going to cover the topic. This session is being recorded, and it will be posted on our YouTube page and sent to all registrants after the event is over. We will have times for question and answer at the end of today's session, but please feel free to put things in the chat. If you prefer to have your question unrecorded, we will have time for that as well. So take it away, Tricia. I think I'm actually going to start. Um, so uh, welcome to the UDC Library Search Preparedness and Resiliency webinar. Uh, this is the second in our Fall 22 Research Essential series. Um, I'm Kathy Meals. And I'm joined by Tricia Clark. Hello, everyone. Uh, in, oh, <laughs> in this session, um, we're going to be covering strategies to prepare for searching for information for research assignments, including where you can search for information with a focus on searching in resources available at the UDC library, uh, preparing for your searches, then a brief tutorial on searching databases, and overcoming common research challenges. At Megan said, um, there will be a Q&A period at the end. Um, please feel free to pose your questions then or put them in the chat in the meantime. Over to you, Tricia. Tricia, you're muted. Hello, sorry about that. <laughs> Lots of screens here. Okay, um, hi everyone. So we live in a world with tons and tons of information available through books, journals, podcasts, radio, TV. So it can be really hard to know where to find information for research assignments. Um, so where can you find information? Um, we, today we're gonna focus on resources that are available through the library to UDC students, to faculty and to staff. And then we'll talk about um, some factors to consider for picking databases to search in. Then we will recommend a few databases that you might wanna explore. Um, so first some basics, what is a database? Um, and what information can you find in library databases? So here's just a, a basic definition of what a database is. Uh, library databases are organized and searchable online resources which provide access to information like articles, journals, eBooks, and media. And by media, we mean things like video um, and even audio occasionally. So why should you use a library database? Um, the biggest reason is that library databases contain a lot of information, uh, usually resources that are not freely available elsewhere online, like with Google, for instance. Um, so you can find a lot of scholarly materials, research studies, uh, dissertations, um, and even more information written by scholars and experts, and from information professionals um, like trade associations that you can use in academic research. So they're very, very helpful. So now that we know a bit more about databases, we can talk about all of the resources that the UDC library actually has and offers to you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually show you our website. And hopefully you can all see that. And at the top of the right side of the page here, you will see our UDC search, which gives you access to our library catalog. And then right underneath that is the link to our A to Z resources list. And I'm just gonna click on that, show you what that looks like. And here is our full list of databases. Now you can see we have over 200 databases available to you for use, and that is quite a bit. Um, all right, I'm just going to switch back to my slide here. Okay, so there are lots of databases, lots of options that you have. Um, so how do you pick the right database? Well, there are some questions you could consider um, when thinking about which database to pick. Firstly, what type of research are you doing? All right, what kind of information are you looking for? What questions are you trying to answer? So for instance, if you're looking to do background research on a topic, you might want to start with an encyclopedia database. Um, and I can show you some examples of that. 
that. Um, an example would be Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, Academic Edition, and Credo Reference are also really good for background research. Um, if you are doing general research or working on a topic um, that has several different subject areas or interdisciplinary in some way, you might want to try a database that has uh, a multi-subject focus. So something like Academic Search Premier, um, Opposing Viewpoints and Context, and ProQuest uh, Multiple Data Search. Those are also really great for um, doing background research or general research. Um, the second question can, to consider is how specific is your research topic? If it's really advanced um, or really specific to your major or area of study, you wanna try a subject specific database. Um, there is a subject drop-down menu at the top of the A to Z resource list uh, that can help you to narrow the list of databases that are appropriate um, subject specific databases. Uh, you might also wanna look at the library's research guides. And let me actually see if I can show you some of this as I'm talking about it. Okay, so um, just kind of backtracking a little bit here. Okay, so we have um, some of the databases I mentioned before, Academic Search Premier, one of our really popular databases. Credo Reference is also a really good one. And then if you are looking for something subject specific, you can use the little drop down menu at the top here and search, select something um, from one of the subject uh, buttons, um, which will be really helpful. All right, and then the third um, question to consider here is what kind of information are you looking for? So um, different databases can have different resources and different types of information. So if you're not finding what you're looking for in one particular database, it can be really helpful to switch to a different database for more information. So for example, if you're looking for um, government documents, um, you can look in a different place than you, um, than you would if you're looking for something like a a newspaper article. And if you're still not sure what database to pick, um, try scanning through the whole A to Z resource list. And again, I'll show you where that is. This whole list here. Um, there are descriptions of each of the databases right underneath them um, that are really helpful. And of course, if you ever need help looking for a piece of information, looking through a database or finding the best data base for your research, you can always contact a librarian. We are here to help and to provide you with some recommendations. All right, I'm going to pass it over to you, Kathy. All right, give me one second here. All right, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we are. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so let's move into preparing to search. Um, once you've picked a database, it's really tempting to just jump right into searching, typing words into search boxes and things like that. Um, but doing some prep work beforehand can help you save a lot of time, uh, stay organized, and make the research go much more smoothly. So before you search, brainstorm some keywords. Um, the primary way to search a database is through keywords. The words are short phrases that represent the information you're looking for. Keywords tell the database what to look for. So why brainstorm? Uh, a brainstorm can help keep you organized. And importantly, searching for information requires experimentation and flexibility. So to find what you're looking for, you're probably going to need to try out different keywords, different combinations of keywords, and so forth. If you brainstorm ahead of time, you already have that list on hand of potential keywords to experiment with in the library database. So this keyword worksheet uh, that you see here can be a useful tool for organizing your keyword brainstorm. Um, so let's just do an example, brainstorm some keywords that we can give a try later. So let's start with a research question. Let's say that uh, it's the question that identifies what you wanna know and learn about your topic. So let's say our research question is, how are heat waves caused by climate change currently affecting unhoused people who live in cities? 
So your first set of keywords can often come directly from the research question. So here we might start a brainstorm with heat waves. Um, we might add unhoused and we might do cities. So these keywords might lead us to exactly what we need, um, but we should also think of some synonyms. And that's because there are often a lot of different ways to describe a concept. And the people who created a piece of information might not use exactly the same terminology that we're using here. If you're having trouble identifying synonyms, you can use a thesaurus to come up with synonyms. That's one really helpful tool. Um, in this case, for our brainstorm for synonyms, we might come up with extreme heat as a synonym for heat waves. Um, homelessness as another term, or homeless is another term that's often used to describe unhoused people, um, or urban as another way to describe a city. We should also think of some related concepts or phrases. Um, in the course of your searching, you might find that you have to get more general or more specific. We might think about extreme weather a little bit more broadly, um, or you know, the impact of a heat wave in a particular geographic area. So brainstorming these synonyms and related phrases is intended to help you prepare for how you might need to adjust your searches as you go, because you will need to adjust your searches. One search will not be enough. You'll have to do many. But with some keywords ready to go, you'll be better prepared for that process. OK. So I am now, uh, now that we've brainstormed some keywords, um, it's time to do some searching. So I'm going to do a quick recap of how to search in library databases so that you're prepared to get started on the search process. So I am here on the UDC Library website. You can Google UDC Library where the first thing that comes up. Um, there's also a link on Blackboard and a link on my UDC. Um, so from the library website, I'm going to click on the link for the, to the A to Z resource list that Trisha showed earlier. It's right here underneath the UDC search bar. And again, this is the list of all of the databases that UDC students, faculty, and staff have access to through the library. Um, I'm going to pick ProQuest Multiple Database Search as my database. Um, the databases are also all listed alphabetically, so it is listed under P on this list. Um, but it's also on the right sidebar here under popular databases right here, um, because it is one of our most commonly used databases. So I'm going to click on the name of the database to access it. I'm off campus right now, so I'm going to have to log in with my username and password. So let me do that really quickly. Okay. So this bar right here in the middle where it says enter search terms is where you'll enter your keywords. So to begin, let's just start with the first keywords we brainstormed, heat waves unhoused in cities. You'll notice I'm typing and in here. This is a way to tell the database that I need all of these words in the search results. It's a way of making the search results more specific. So I'm going to now click the green magnifying glass search button to the right of the search bar. Okay, and we have 70 results, that's not too bad. So that was our first shot at a search. Let's also try out some of those synonyms that we brainstormed earlier. Um, so for example, I am going to uh, replace heat waves with extreme heat. And I will update my search by clicking on the magnifying glass to the right of the search bar. Okay, so this actually changed our search quite a bit, right? Um, we had 70 results before, we now have nearly 1500 results. Um, that's an example of the impact of experimenting with the keywords. If you're going to be successful with searching and finding good information for your research assignments, it will almost always require a lot of experimentation and a lot of trial and error. So I wanted to identify two strategies that we can also use to narrow down the search results, right? 1500 is a lot of search results. It's best to narrow that down. So one very, very helpful tool is putting quotation marks around extreme heat. Let me do that and then I'll explain why. 
So what this does is tell the database we need these words right next to each other as an exact phrase. Um, without the quotation marks right now, we're finding the word extreme in one place in an article, heat in another. They may not actually be related. So quotation marks make sure that we find this phrase rather than the individual words. It's so helpful when you're looking for information on a concept that's expressed in multiple words, and it works just about anywhere you can search for information, including Google. So let's rerun that search with our quotation marks. And I'll, again, I'll click this green magnifying glass button. And that narrowed down our search by quite a bit. We're now at 241 results. So that's the sort of impact that you can see of um, tips like putting quotation marks around phrases. We can also use the options on the left side of the screen here to narrow down our results. Um, there's something like this left sidebar in pretty much every database. It might look a little bit different, but the concepts are the same. Um, so we might need to make sure that we have recent articles with the most updated information, right? Since climate change is evolving rapidly. So we can adjust the date. So we're only finding results from the past year. So if I scroll down a little bit to publication date, I have the option to narrow my results to just materials that were published in the last 12 months. I'll select that date range just by clicking on it, and that will update our search. So this is called filtering your results. Um, there's a lot of other filters that you can try here, like source type, things like that. Um, and that's called filtering your results. The concept is the same in multiple databases, might look a little bit different, but it's a way to narrow down your search to make it more specific so you don't have as many sources to, to kind of browse through. Now, if you spot something interesting, um, you can just click on the title to open up the article. So let's just look at this first result. So here we have the title of the article, the author information, the publication that it appeared in, the date that it was published. All of that is information that you'll need to create citations for your research, right? Um, you can read the text of the article right in the middle below. Um, and there's almost always an option to save the article as a PDF, as there is up in the upper right-hand corner here. Okay, that was just a very quick overview of how to navigate the databases. Um, go ahead and experiment and try new things to learn how to use the databases. Learning to research and find what you need takes a lot of practice and experimentation. I always joke that you're not going to break the databases by experimenting with them, so don't worry about it. Go forth and practice. And remember that we're here to help as you learn to search for information. Right. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so one of the important things to remember about research is that it is a process. Uh, it is often a long process and can definitely be a frustrating process. Um, it's not easy. So that's one thing to remember. Um, you will have a few challenges um, doing this, doing research, but thankfully there are some ways to overcome research uh, challenges. So the first thing to do is to take a breath um, realize that you are not alone and that research is not, uh, for many people, not an intuitive um, process. Um, you will take some time to kind of get used to it. Um, there are a few common challenges that we see researchers encountering. One of those is that your search may have far too many results, right? And you'll often notice that kind of thing happening if you're doing a search with um, maybe some really basic keywords or, you know, without putting those quotations around the keywords, you'll, you'll um, end up having a lot more um, results than you were anticipating. And sometimes that can be a good thing. Um, another common challenge is that your search does not have enough results. And that is a bit more of a challenging um, issue. And you'll have to do some, um, some navigating and some, uh, some brainstorming to figure out ways to, to solve that issue. Um, another common challenge is not being able to find the specific thing you're looking for. And of course, just feeling generally overwhelmed with the research process. So, 
um, what are some things that you can do to overcome the research challenges? Well, number one, you can adjust your keywords. So that might mean trying some of the different keywords that you have brainstormed, uh, maybe coming up with new ones in the moment. Um, if you often have too many results, adding more keywords can help to narrow your search a bit. Or if you don't have enough useful results, try fewer keywords. Something else you can do is to also adjust your filters. Um, so Kathy mentioned those filters on the side, the left side of your screen, which are often in many of the databases that you'll find. Um, filters really help to make your search more specific. So if you end up having too many results, you can add more filters, and that often help narrow down your research uh, results a bit um, to be a bit more manageable. Something else you can do and something I've mentioned before is that you can try different databases. If you are not finding what you're looking for in the databases that you've started off with, um, try a couple more. A lot of this, a lot of the research process is truly experimentation. Um, it's, it's not, uh, you know, the, the first set of results you get are not often gonna be the ones that you end up using. So try a few different databases and you might end up finding sources that you can't find um, in one, you'll find in another. Um, something else you can do is to consider narrowing or expanding your research question. Um, if you are um, looking at a question that might be providing you with too much information, they're not, it's not as specific as it should be. Um, so for instance, um, how does gentrification impact cities? That's a really broad question, right? Um, so by, you can actually think about um, reframing that question um, to say something like, how does gentrification impact the public health of teenagers in Ward 8? Um, that's really specific to a particular group of people and a particular location. Now, that might be uh, a bit too narrow um, to have too many results, but it will actually help you to um, hone in on a bit more um, results. If you are having trouble finding a particular resource, um, you can request books through our um, consortium, the Washington Research Library Consortium's loan service. Um, you can access books from eight other local universities, or you can request articles through our interlibrary loan process um, where you can send a request to another library for a particular resource. And finally, another way to overcome search challenges is just to ask for help. If you have tried all of these things, or even if you've tried none of these things, um, you can always reach out to a library and you can reach us through chat, uh, through email, you can call us. Um, we are here to help you to, um, first of all, to, to not feel frustrated, um, but to also just to help you you know, at every step of that research process. And that's it. Um, does anybody have any questions? Please feel free to put your questions in the chat. We will also have time for unrequest, unrecorded questions at the end, so you can also unmute yourself. Again, just as a reminder, this recording will be posted on our YouTube page and we will send it out to all registrants as well. So just waiting to see if any questions come in. All right, not seeing any at the moment. I do want to say thank you for attending today. And we hope that you join us for some of our upcoming sessions. You can find the entire list of webinars for the fall semester on our website. And as always, please feel free to reach out and contact us if you have any questions. Our email is ask at udc.libanswers.com. On our website, we have our online chat service where you can contact us at any time. And we also offer appointments where you can stop by and see us at the reference. So again, thank you for attending today. I am now going to end the recording. <laughs>